you, you mentioned something with all these coaches opening and, and really Tennessee is the one who started this trend because they fired Philip Fulmer earlier than was traditional for a reason because they thought Lane Kiffin was going to get the Washington job at the time. So that's why they made the move. And, and Lane kind of played Tennessee a little bit. He was more interested in Tennessee than Washington at the time by far, but in some ways Lane leveraged Philip Fulmer out of his job and Lane ends up getting the job. Um, and now you see that a lot of these schools are making early firings in order to uh, get a head start in the hiring process. You see that in Nebraska, you see that in a lot of other schools. So is Josh Heupel a candidate for any of these potential openings? I say no. Because I don't see a job that's better. I, I mean, Nebraska's not a better job. That's going to be tougher to recruit there. Forget about in-state talent one way or another, but Tennessee does have better in-state talent with Nashville. Tennessee has more um, resources to recruit. Amanda, I, I don't think that's any I, – I don't see a school out there that would be even a lateral move as far as a coaching vacancy for Josh Heupel. I don't. There's only one. There's only one job that I think he might take. And we've seen them this season. They look like hot garbage. They're not used to looking like hot garbage since the days of Stoops. That's the only one I could see. And, and not to, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily blame Josh Heupel because it's your alma mater. It's where you played. It's where you won a national title, all of that. So I, I think there's only one job I could see him possibly leaving Tennessee for. And that's the only one. Oklahoma is the only one I could see and not, it wouldn't have anything to do with talent. It wouldn't have anything to do with, you know, recruiting. It wouldn't have anything to do with that. It would just have to do with like, like Coach Bryant said, when mama comes calling, you go. So, I mean, that's it. That's the only I, thing I can think. Possible. I, a lot of things would have to change. And Kevin just saying bridges were burnt at OU. They were. He got fired at a time when they should have fired um, Bob Stoops' Stoops. brother. Yeah. And the, he was the defensive coordinator. So, at the time, they're scoring right at 40 points a game. And Heupel's the offensive coordinator. And essentially... Bob Stoops to save his rear had to fire somebody. So he didn't, you can't fire your brother, I guess. And so he fired Josh Heupel. So, so I, there's some bridges that have been burnt there. I think the entire administration would have to change, which can't happen for him to consider going back there. I think we're talking two, three, four years down the line. I think they're pretty happy with what they have going on right now. No, no they're not. Oklahoma? No. Yeah, I mean, long term, you don't think they like Brent Venables. I mean, look at what he's look at what he's done this season. It's embarrassment. They are embarrassed. I mean, they have not they have looked like again, hot garbage this season. I mean, they're 3 and 2 already. It's, you know, you're 5 games into the season. Oh, this is not Oklahoma. Oklahoma doesn't like this, and it's not like they lost a bunch of talent. I mean, they just switch coaches. Well, I said at the time, I thought it was a bad hire. Um, and But I get the sense that th th they're going to at least write it out. So I guess we could get it in this discussion. And that is, if, if Brent Venables has trouble at Oklahoma, then... Yeah, where are they in two or three years? Do they come calling Josh Heupel? Again, I would I would believe firmly that would take a not a top to bottom. It doesn't have to be the president of the university or the chancellor, but that would take a significant change in the athletic department. And maybe that will be. I just didn't get the the hire of Brent Venables. It's one of the few times I think Chris Landry and I kind of disagreed is I to, to me, you need to hire a guy who can manufacture points. You need to hire a guy who can go out and do that. And I know they 
They have an offensive coordinator supposed to be able to do that, blah, blah, blah. But it's the way your program is set up. It's it's the way that Tennessee's program is set up. There's more emphasis put on offense and practice, not just in games. So I didn't think Brent Venables was a very good hire from the get. What did you think when was he when he was initially hired there? I I didn't I didn't even know who he was. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but I mean this I know Oklahoma fans had high hopes for him, but this season has, I mean, they have gone, they've flipped the script. They've kind of done what UT did in reverse. So, I mean, they beat Utah, Kent State, and Nebraska. Those are the teams that they've beaten. They've lost to Kansas State and and not even just lost to TCU, got bar- embarrassed by TCU by 31 points. Like they're they're not happy over there. What they're not happy. When I say yeah, when I say happy, I thought happy with the hire, but but probably not. I was thinking more long term. But you bring up a great point. This is not a program that was a complete disarray that you're trying to rebuild. So they're pretty um, good. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. We greatly appreciate that. Um, but I don't believe. <laughs> JL says Hypel isn't going to anywhere. OU bleeped on him. Yes, they 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 did. Was and- it OU or was it Stoops? That's where you have to because if Stoops had complete control of that program, it's not like somebody could have stepped in like the athletic director and said, No, you're not firing him. You got to fire him. They gave Stoops the complete control of that program. So is it really Oklahoma or is it Stoops that Hypo would have a problem with. Well, Stoops is still associated with the program, so it may be one and the same, but probably Stoops. And it was his decision. I, I doubt the athletic director said you have to fire the offensive coordinator instead of your brother. Um, and Stoops is very involved with the program, as RG1 pointed out. Um, with, with, with that whole situation, let's take a step back and forget the fact that Josh Heupel played at Oklahoma. Let's take a big step back and just say, what's the better job? What is the better job given in-state talent? Um, and when I sometimes when I say in-state, I'm sort of referring to Atlanta as well because it's just you know less than two hours or less than three hours away. So I include that to some extent Oklahoma there's not a lot of talent um and let's take it a step further resources I think that Tennessee is right up there the way that they will embrace a successful coach is right up there I don't if I any allegiance aside that Josh Heupel might have to Oklahoma because he played there I have to take a, a step back, and when I remove that, which is the better job, Amanda? You, which is the better job? If you were given this, you, they come to you and they say, Coach Lafrada, we are going to hire you to be the head coach, and you, you're like Lane Kiffin. You can go to Washington or you can go to Tennessee. Tennessee was obviously the better job. You can go to the, you can go to Oklahoma or you can go to Tennessee. No allegiances. Where are you going? Well, God bless you for thinking that, you know, you're going to hire me. That's that's nice. Um, But second, if, if I were not, okay, if Oklahoma were not going to the SEC, I would go to Oklahoma. And the only reason why is because playing in the Big 12 is much easier than playing in the SEC. I mean, much easier. We've seen that. You you just go in there. I mean, you had Texas who who sucked for the last you know however long, and you just go in there and all you all you do is just sweep it up with these like awful not awful but mediocre teams. The SEC, you're playing against the best of the best, especially at Tennessee. You're playing at Alabama, Florida, and Georgia every single season. Well, but they, are, but they are going to be in the SEC probably as early as. Okay. That's what I'm saying is I would have big 12 
if if I were if I were going, I would have gone to Oklahoma. I'd have picked Oklahoma just because of the Big Twelve. Now that they're coming to the SEC, I would take Tennessee. I think Tennessee's better. Um, I think you're going to get better talent at Tennessee, like you pointed out. I think that you're going to have more money to do with what you will at Tennessee. I think it's a better job if you're just if you're just focused in on the SEC. I would say Tennessee. Here's the other thing too. Do you wonder if Lincoln Riley pulled a Jimbo Fisher? Was his recruiting as good as it should have been or was when he was hungry? Because at some point in his mind, before USC came calling, he had to think to himself, maybe this isn't the place for me. That's what cracks open the door. So maybe maybe the talent level is not as high. Because Jimbo Fisher left Florida State in just a mess uh, of not any talent whatsoever. He knew he was cruising out of there. He knew he was going somewhere and he he took his paycheck and he'll make a hundred million dollars and good for him. But you wonder if Oklahoma might, if there might be any similarity there, I don't know. Uh, but they're certainly not playing well now. Um, you can watch them. Play. No, they're not good. And I, I just don't think the, I mean, other than Nick Saban and Kirby smart who have accepted well, Nick Saban has. Kirby Smart really hasn't. An up-tempo spread offense. Who's the defensive coach out there that's winning with defense? You don't anymore. I mean, not even Nick Saban. Not even Kirby. Or they're, neither one of them are winning with defense. I mean, Kirby has a strong defense. Don't get me wrong. But neither one of them, you're not winning without being able to score points. You're not winning without elite running backs and wide receivers that can snatch the ball out of the air from anyone. You're not winning without those things. So the defense is good. Don't get me wrong. They're they're good. But if you, in today's college football, if you have to pick between a prolific offense or a really good defense, you're taking the offense. You're taking the offense all day. Uh, Brittany with a good point. Maybe I'm super biased, but I feel like Danny White is the AD to work for right now. Well, he's come in and he's changed a lot of things. I mean, you look at he has managed to – I mean, he's the guy ultimately – The hiring of coaches is important, but putting together the dollars for facility upgrades and baseball and football and all the things that, they, that they've that they been able to do over there, that's what Danny White and an AD is ultimately supposed to do. I mean, you you make the right hire, yes, you've got to do that. But they've got search firms for that if you want to go in that direction. Guys that know more about football or basketball or baseball than you do. But but ultimately, it's your job to have the best foundation for the university. It's not to just go make a splash hire and change things. So, yeah, Danny White, I think, would, would certainly be the AD to work for right now. And I like Danny White's spunk a little bit. I like when he called out Auburn. Still, yeah, still wonder if he got chided by the SEC for that. Behind I doubt him. it. I think we would have heard about it. But all I'm saying is that Danny White, she does make a very good point. He would be the guy to work for. I mean, he definitely would be the guy to work for. It seems like he doesn't care much about what people think. It is, I'm going to do what I do. And here we are. Saban's the same way. I'm going to do what I do. And, and if you don't like it, then you can lump it, basically. But we're looking at an Oklahoma. <laughs> we're I, looking at. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> yeah. don't like it, lump it. That may be a, yes. That may be a new bit. I don't. Well, maybe. But Oklahoma, we're talking about having the same losses in five games as they did in thirteen games last season, and at week twelve, they had two losses. That's when they got to two losses, and they were to two, two ranked teams: Baylor and Oklahoma State. Those were their two losses last season. And look at what's happening this season. I'm just saying the fall off here is is incredible. Yep. You can watch wins and losses at Big Orange Phillies. Big Orange Phillies right there in North Knoxville. It's on Maynardville Pike. It's convenient to Halls and Powell and Maynardville. And it's family friendly. They've got billiards they've got darts they've got cornhole they've got everything you can imagine and great food we ate there and it was absolutely fantastic uh another good point by Brittany. Brittany's 
throw in heat today. Definitely think UT would be the better job with them joining the SEC. She's referring to Oklahoma joining the SEC. I agree. I agree. If it's in the Big 12, like Amanda said, if you want to make the college football playoff, which would give you some sense of job security, even if you never won a championship and got hammered by Alabama and Georgia every year, nobody's going to fire you for getting to the college football playoff once every three years, ever. And if, if, that's, if that's what your goal is, then OU is the better job before they join the SEC. Exactly. The Big 12, if you can get a job in the Big 12 and you can recruit halfway decently, go to the Big 12 because you can win. You can win in the Big 12. In the SEC, you are going up against the toughest opponents with the, the baddest coaches out there and baddest as in best. Great. You are, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, you're going up against these guys every single year, every single season. Like I pointed out, Tennessee is going up against Alabama, Georgia, and Florida every single season. It's not like it's they do Alabama, you know, once every six years. It's it's every single season. So you got to take that in consideration. 